To use Jupiter's moons as a clock for determining longitude at sea, observing them through a telescope on the deck of a continuously moving ship, Galileo designed a device that he called celatone from celata, a type of helmet called a salet in English. It consisted of a metal helmet with a visor carrying a small telescope. The visor was hinged to the side of the helmet and could be adjusted to align the axis of the telescope with the eye of the observer. The wearer could thus continuously adjust the aim to the ship's pitch and roll. And the planet would always remain with the telescope's field of view. Galileo came up with a different solution. He imagined a hemispheric vessel in which the sailor assigned to the observation would be seated. The vessel floated on oil in a tub that was also shaped like a hemisphere. Its diameter was only slightly larger, so as to minimize the quantity of oil required. Like gimbals, the oil bath would have neutralized the ship's oscillations, keeping the observer in a stable position. In a letter to Giuliano de' Medici, Tuscan ambassador to Prague, dated December the 11th, 1610, Galileo made the announcement of a sensational astronomical discovery by means of a complex anagram that Kepler tried in vain to decipher. The enigma was then revealed in another letter to Giuliano de' Medici, dated January the 1st, 1611. The mother of love, that is Venus, imitates the configurations of Cynthia, that is the moon. In other words, the planet Venus, exactly like the moon, presented phases. This discovery held great cosmological implications. In the Ptolemaic system, in fact, each planet moved in a circle, the epicycle, whose center rotated in a larger circle, called deferent, around the Earth, immobile at the center of the universe. To explain the fact that Venus and Mercury never moved beyond a certain angular distance from the Sun, the Ptolemaic model held that the center of the epicycle had a period of one year and was always centered on the Sun. The two planets were thus perennially found below the solar orb and consequently would have been obliged to show the phenomenon of the phases without ever exceeding a narrow sickle. In the Copernican system, instead, the Sun is immobile at the center of the universe, while all of the planets, Earth included, rotate around it. The orbits of Venus and Mercury are thus found within the Earth's orbit. For this reason, they should show the entire range of phases, which is what Galileo managed to observe for the first time. The discovery of the phases of Venus reinforced Galileo's conviction of the truth of the Copernican system. In 1610, Galileo observed Saturn with his telescope and found it to be triple-bodied, that is, composed of a central body with two smaller lumps flanking it. Roughly two years later, however, Saturn appeared as solitary, and in 1616, Galileo observed once again the presence of the planet's two companions, which seemed much changed from the first time he saw them. In the following decades, many authoritative observers described Saturn in sharply differing ways. It was only in 1659 that Christian Huygens formed the hypothesis that the planet was surrounded by a ring that always remained parallel to itself. Eugen's theory was challenged by the Jesuit Honoré Fabry, who claimed that Saturn was accompanied by four satellites, two dark and two light. The satellites would have moved in pairs on orbits situated beyond Saturn, 
and their shifting combinations would have produced the observed appearances. In the summer of 1660, the members of the Accademia del Cimento, invited by Prince Leopold to settle the dispute, made a small model of Saturn that was observed from about 75 meters away with two telescopes of differing strength and quality. The test showed that Saturn could indeed appear triple-bodied. When the ring was slanted at certain angles, the sections furthest from the planet could still be seen, while those closest grew thin, and when observed with a telescope that was too weak, would disappear altogether.